In a world far away from the hemisphere, a man with nowhere else to go, with no other options, what is he to do? He goes out and commits the most travesty that has ever been seen in a world. This is the story of Terry Rosslyn, the suicide bomber. <laughs> Terry Lee Rosslyn was born on June 21, 1952, in Silver Bow County, Montana. As I looked around, not much is known about his private life or early, so we're just going to go ahead and dive into what led to this incident. Rosslyn was married and had one child, a boy, and he was very despondent over the marital problems that he was facing, along with having a potential divorce which made everything so much worse and not only that earlier that same day his wife had obtained a restraining order to keep him away from her and their 15 year old son rosalind had also recently lost his job and was unstable due to the amount of painkillers that he had taken so you wrapped around all that stuff and that can turn you into a crazed man with nothing to lose on december 20th 1989 Terry ran out of his house and loaded his 1982 Dodge Colt hatchback full of gasoline and pipe bombs with the intention of ending his life. But before he can go ahead and do that, he attracted the attention of authorities by robbing an Ostro drugstore pharmacy and got the workers to give him codeine and Valium. The police was informed and drove all the way to the Oscar drugstore pharmacy to apprehend Rosslyn. Rosslyn got away quickly and led police on a 30 minute chase at slow speed. He drove to an uptown street where he lived in Bodie, Montana, where the police cornered off his vehicle. When the police surrounded his car at the last minute, Rosslyn revealed it was loaded with pipe bombs and gasoline. The police and detectives were still surrounding his car and Terry demanded to speak to his wife and children and threatened to commit suicide if his demands were not met. Police locked down the entire area and a standoff began between them and Rosslyn. It was five days before Christmas and the area was packed with people, Christmas shopping, being with their families, things like that. The bystanders watched the event unfold and began filming the incident. Sheriff Bob Vutorovich, Lieutenant Bob Lee, and Sergeant Dan Hollis, all of whom who were familiar with Rosslyn that have known him for many, many years, approached his car and began negotiating with him. Vutorovich spoke with Rosslyn while the other Lieutenant Lee deflated one of Rosslyn's tires to stop him from fleeing. I thought that if he looks through that passenger side mirror and sees me, it could be over. So at this point, the standoff has been happening for 45 minutes, and after repeated attempts to get Rosslyn to surrender, he finally detonated the pipe bomb, and the car exploded. Terry does the unthinkable, and detonates the pipe bomb on the front front seat. Butorovich and Lee were both standing directly next to the car as it exploded. They only managed to escape with only major injuries. After the incident happened, Rosslyn managed to survive as well, but he was set ablaze and was in excruciating pain. The car door opened and he fled on foot while the car was still on fire and he was on fire as well. Fire crews rushed to Rosslyn's aid and put off the fire. The fire in Rosslyn's vehicle then spread to the back of the car and caused the remaining pipe bombs to explode. He also received emergency medical care and survived a suicide attempt despite over 70% of his body being burnt. Rosslyn was flown to a specialist burn unit several states away and went through months of intensive care. And he spent more than three months in the burn unit at the University of Utah's medical center in Salt Lake City. While there, he underwent sin surgery at least three times and he was later transferred to the Jalen campus on Montana State Hospital. After that, he was extradited back to Booty to stand trial for his crime. 
Bratorovich personally escorted Roslyn back to the airport when he returned. I'm in a whole bunch of trouble. I had no intentions of causing anybody else any harm. Roslin was due to face trial in late 1990. He faced numerous criminal charges, including attempted deliberate homicide. However, before it could even begin, the police were called to his home shortly after and found Roslin dead. He had taken his own life by drug overdose. The numerous pills that was found in his system were due to his drug overdose, of course. He was found dead inside a shed behind his house and had been wearing headphones. He was 38 years old at the time of his death. He was on leave from a physical rehab facility and took his life at his home in Booty, Montana on October 9, 1990. Reportedly, he called one of his good friends, Dan Hollis, on the phone who told him he could not speak to him due to the upcoming trial, to which Rosalind replied, this is not going to trial and pending his suicide attempt. Rosalind was buried in Mount Mora Cemetery in Bodie, Montana. Lieutenant Bob Lee, one of the police officers who had negotiated with Rosalind, died on December 6, 2013, at the age of 68. And Sheriff Robert Bratorovich died on August 17, 2020. And Dan Hollis is still alive with us as we know it. Well, Insiders, it made it towards the end. Thank you for watching. I took a lot of time and effort to really make this documentary work. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. And consider being in the 400 special, I thought it would be the right time to do it. So thank you again very much for watching. Make sure to sub and I'll create some more content to you guys in the near future. Peace.